Hello everyone and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Dean Blevins. Should have a great show for you today because highlights from what was billed as the biggest game in Stillwater in school history, Oklahoma State convincingly over Kansas. Coach, congratulations. A big win for you. I don't know whether it was convincingly. We won the game, <laughs> but it was a war. Uh, I talked with uh, our staff about 10 minutes into the game and then I told our team afterwards and then in the press room afterwards and then on the radio show and after looking at the film, I still feel the same way. I have never been a part of a game where the intensity level was as high as it was in gallagher Iba Arena on Saturday afternoon. On the part of both ball clubs, it wasn't only hard to run your offense, it was hard just to get a pass off at times and to get a shot off. Both teams played as hard as they could play, and I guess I should add the, t the fans probably played about as hard as they could play because it, there was electricity in the air like I'd never seen before. And, and when two teams play as hard as they do, the game is not going to be smooth when you play defense like the Jayhawks and like the Cowboys played. Uh, a, just a grueling battle. And finally, in the second half, we were able to uh, get our offense generated a little bit. And they helped us some by not hitting free throws. But if you're going to give a, a grade to two basketball teams on effort, uh, you're going to give both those ball clubs A pluses because uh, it was just a, an unbelievable a game from that standpoint. All right, we'll take a time out. When we come back, we will talk more about Kansas. We'll also look ahead and talk about the Big 8 standings and Eddie's favorite subjects, of course, the rankings. Stay with us. The Eddie Sutton Show continues after this. Welcome back to the program. We're taping this program on Monday. Coach, you all played, I guess, last night with our viewers because it's uh, Monday here, but on Wednesday you played Colorado and you play also on Saturday. Well, the reason we did that, Dean, uh, uh, the wear and tear that a basketball player has on their body during this time of the year, to fly to Boulder, or fly to Denver, actually, uh, we went out on Tuesday, or we're going out on Tuesday, uh, play the game Wednesday, come back here Thursday, then turn right around and have to leave again Friday. And the only thing you would have accomplished, we could have attended, I guess, a couple of classes on Friday morning, but we made the decision to go on out there, stay on the road, and then come back uh, after our ball game on Saturday. But the one thing that we do, we uh, require our players to have study hall on the road. Uh, they take their books with them. Uh, everything is cleared before they leave with their professors to make sure they have their assignments. And uh, we don't want to miss in class, but uh, we felt like this is the only time of the year we we're going to do this. Normally when we travel, uh, we depart the evening before the game, fly up in private aircraft, come back uh, the following evening after the ball game. That way we only miss one day of classes. So this is the only time of the year that we'll do this. But surprisingly, we don't miss very many classes during the year. Not nearly as many as some of the other sports yeah. uh, that we have, such as baseball and golf and tennis. All right, to the highlights of Oklahoma State, Kansas. The Cowboys looking for their 28th straight win at gallagher Iba Arena. And yes, it was a hot ticket. I was asking 250 and somebody gave me two. And I, I was, they offered me 200 and I said, no, and I, now I wish I had it, but I should have took it. Well, that's right. Wish you could. They've been going, Southwest Corner's been going for seven, five weeks. See ya. The we may I hope we may have should have blotted his face out. Maybe he <laughs> will be arrested next time we see him. Well, we pick up action here in the first half. In fact, this is the first basket we get. Byron misses. Uh, Bryant uh, misses a follow, but then uh, keeps the ball high and gets a tip. And at this point, uh, three to two. But you can see the uh, intensity out there. The defense is being played on the part of both ball clubs. Coy misses, uh, Byron uh, follows the shot, gets fouled, and at this point uh, we take the lead, and I guess we're ahead from this point on. 52 Sean, fouls as Sean knocks down a three. Great guard play Saturday. Outstanding guard play on the part of both ball clubs, but especially on ours because our guards did a good job defensively on them and held uh, Adonis Jordan and Walters and uh, Woodbury. Their guard scored some points, but uh, a lot of those points came late. Look at that pass. Great penetrating dribble by uh, Darwin and a feed to Corey and he lays it up. Nice pass by Cornell. Cornell didn't score a lot of points but had five assists and there's one of them to Sean and he hit the uh, back door layup and was fouled on the play. Our guards offensively did a good job. Uh, Sean led our ball club with 16 points. There's another great uh, uh, penetrating dribble. Broke the defense down by Corey Williams and dished off to Brown. There's a shot of Mr. Iba. And there at halftime, they honored uh, 
I guess, uh, one of the great running backs of all time in the sport of football, uh, Sanders. I was amazed. He came in our dressing room after the ball game how, how small he is. And then I looked at his legs, and there were a couple of tree trunks. <laughs> well, he can jam it. He can uh, knock it home. I was about to say your team's unselfish. Barry Sanders is as well. But that's one of the things that stands out about your squad, Coach. Very unselfish. They certainly are, and that's one of the reasons we're 21-1. and one. Good steal by uh, Darren Alexander before the last trip down. He hit a three-point shot. This time he goes down, dishes a ball off to Williams, and he hits a, hits a tray. We were three out of ten, but uh, you saw two of them on the last two trips down the floor. There's Darren Alexander, and that's one of those shots he drove in there, and he, he was pretty uh, covered pretty tightly and saying, no, 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 and then he hits the shot. He's had a great <laughs> shot. There's uh, Sean, when they made a run at us uh, late in the ball game, I think they'd cut the lead to six or seven points, and uh, he, we were running our five game, our semi-control game, and there he, you show him again. He makes another great drive down the baseline, and two big plays that kind of uh, curtail their momentum. Sure seemed like your uh, guards played very well, as there's the final 64-56, and what Roy had to say. Roy just said, uh, you got a great basketball team, and I return the compliment. And uh, both those teams certainly are top uh, ten teams. I'm not sure that we're still uh, deserving of our <laughs> number two ranking, but uh, that's where we are this week. And Kansas dropped to fifth, I think, in one poll, and they were tied uh, with, uh, I believe, Ohio State for fourth in the other poll. But the Jayhawks are an outstanding ball club, and even though we won, they still have a leg up on us because they have won on the road at Missouri, at Colorado, and at Norman. So uh, we've only won one road game, and that's why this week is so important, going to Colorado and Iowa State. If we can uh, come back with two victories, then uh, we've pretty much caught up with them. It's uh, even Steven from that point in. We'll talk more about Kansas and a lot more coming up next on the Eddie Sutton Show. Three minutes remaining. Sean Sutton will go back door as Kansas is within six. A big play here, Coach. We had a uh, lead, I guess, of 17 points, and they uh, came down and had a run going, and he, Walters went for the steal, and they don't get there quick enough, Woodbury, to support, and uh, Sean saw the daylight, drove the ball to the basket, uh, hit it, and Woodbury fouls him, hits a free throw, and uh, that puts the uh, lead up to uh, nine again. Well, that wasn't your true back door, but it's, we were talking during the break. It's I mean, a, here a it play is here where the, the defense is so far out. I uh, don't remember seeing that much. Well. We didn't have uh, that many easy baskets. That's what I said earlier, that it was just a, a game where every time you had to work just to get a good shot, and uh, the defense did show up. They've been shooting 53% for the season. I think that's fourth in the country. They shot 40%. Uh, we've been shooting about 51%, and we shot 39%. So defense played a big role in, in that ball game. Uh, they had, I think, 16 turnovers. We had 20. but. It was still a marvelous game. Anyone that appreciates defense would have would enjoyed that game. And anyone that appreciates young men or a team that would go out and play as hard as those two teams did, they appreciated that ball game. And uh, a big victory, uh, a team victory, in that everybody that played in that ball game, Mill Brown played well, Cornell Hatcher, uh, we're going to see the play of the game or the, uh, uh, some team defense here in a minute. Bryant Reeves only scored, I think, uh, four points in the ball game, but pulled down 12 rebounds. And again, I can't heap enough praise on him. He just keeps coming and coming. We'll take a 30 second break. When we come back, we'll take a look at Coach's Corner starring Big Country. Stay with us. And this week's Coach's Corner segment uh, features Big Country, Bryant Reeves. Well, Bryant Reeves in the four previous games had uh, hit in double figures. This game he did not, but he pulled down 12 rebounds, which is one third of all the rebounds we got in the ball game, and played excellent defense inside. And you can see our defense, everybody is pressure on the ball, overplaying the passing lanes, keeping the ball out of the pivot area. Here's a drive to the basket, good help. Forced them into what you would call a marginal shot. Bryant stays with it, blocks his shot, pulls it down. Good defensive board play there on the part of Bryant. Coach, if he, uh, three more years, I mean, if he <laughs> continues to improve, you're talking about a dominating type player. Well, Kansas has one also. Ostertag right. is actually bigger than Brian. He's 7'2", and I think weighs about the same. So there'll be a, a, a lot of battles between those two in the years to come. But if Bryant continues to improve like he has, 
uh, he's got a chance to be an outstanding basketball player and a dominant basketball player in his uh, last couple of years in college. We'll take a break and we come back a nice feature for you uh, concerning the radio show that Coach hit the road with. We'll show you that when we come back. Part of the responsibility of Coach Eddie Sutton in running this OSU program is getting the word out on OSU basketball to his fans. And one of the best ways is through his weekly radio show. And Coach Sutton, Sutton style is to take it right to the people. Enjoy this. Sutton Show. Tom Dorado and Eddie Sutton, and we are back at the Zeta Tau Alpha House on the campus of Oklahoma State University. And so begins another edition of the Eddie Sutton Radio Call In Show. But this is not your typical radio show. About midway through last season, it was determined it might be more fun if Coach Sutton and host Tom Dorado broadcast the weekly show in front of a live audience. This particular show was hosted by the Zeta Tau Alpha Sorority on the OSU campus. Each week, the show moves to a different campus residence. The show has become so popular, Dorado starts getting requests to host the show in the summer. Dorado attributes the high level of interest directly to Coach Sutton. Eddie is, makes the kids feel so at home in their home. Uh, before the hour is over, it's like they're talking with their dad. And it really is, it, every place we go, when we go in for the first time, it's the same situation. Eddie comes to the door and they appear to be somewhat in awe when he gets there and within a minute, two minutes, he has disarmed them to where they're talking with him like they've known him for years. Joe Riddle is the show's engineer. He sets up all the equipment and makes sure Coach Sutton can not only hear questions from the callers, but allows the audience to participate as well, and the Zetas were well prepared. Coach, I was just wondering, you mentioned our long road trip that we will be taking next week. I was wondering, how does that affect the boys academically? There are 110 members of the Zeta Tau Alpha sorority. 70 live in the house, and many of them are basketball season ticket holders. The Zetas have hosted the Eddie Sutton show in the past and are always anxious for the head coach to spend some time in their house. Eddie seems really laid back and very easy to talk to. I mean, the girls feel really comfortable having him here at our house, and they really enjoy it when he comes. And you can also see that in his coaching at the games. They, they just really think very highly of Coach Sutton. This show had a special visitor. Gene Wojcikowski is the national college basketball writer for the Los Angeles Times. He was in Stillwater to write a story about the resurgence of the OSU basketball program and cover the Cowboys' showdown with Kansas. He was certainly impressed with the gathering at the Zeta House. You know what, I'm just beginning to get the hearing back in my ears from the, uh, the Zetas. Uh, they're, they're quite an enthusiastic group, but uh, I think it's neat. I think it's great that uh, uh, Coach Sutton makes this kind of effort and that the students and, and the fans here make the effort back. The Zetas were a lively group, adding excitement and enthusiasm to the show. And it was their way of expressing appreciation and support for the OSU basketball team. Coach Sutton, um, I think that he is an incredible guy. I know some of the players on the team, and he has told me, they have told me um, that he's a great coach. He likes to work with them well, and he seems very friendly and that they have a um, good communication. It is unlikely anyone would be upset with Coach Sutton if he did not make himself so accessible to the public. But that is not his style. Coach Sutton is a people person, not only with his players, but with the people who support his players. And they support you. We have a lot of fun doing those shows, Joe and Tom and myself, but uh, we got to remember that uh, if it weren't for the students, we wouldn't have a basketball team and we wouldn't have a university and I wouldn't be coaching at Oklahoma State University. So I've always been partial to students and uh, I hope we can, can continue to do those programs around campus. All right, let's take a look at the Big 8 standings where Oklahoma State is on top at 5-1, and 21-1 on the year. Kansas right there with you, Coach. Well, Kansas, as I mentioned earlier, they still have a, a leg up on everyone else, but a team right behind them, the University of Missouri with their win down in Norman, they're only one game behind, and uh, Norm Stewart has an outstanding ball club. They're currently ranked 11th, I think, this week in the uh, polls. Nebraska was upset uh, this past uh, 
week by Kansas State, but that doesn't mean anything. There's no such thing as an upset in this league because everybody's good. And then, of course, you have Iowa State on down the line. Colorado is in last place. And we'll take a look at the schedule and remind you that it is Monday when we're taping this program, Saturday, February the 15th, Oklahoma State at Iowa State. That's a Raycom game. Colorado at Kansas. And on Sunday, Oklahoma tries to win one at home. Has Kansas State in Norman. Well, Oklahoma's off this week until that game. And then, of course, uh, you see Nebraska and Missouri. And then we entertain the uh, Sooners uh, next Wednesday. Uh, and that'll be another big ball game uh, here in gallagher Iowa Arena. We'll try to sweep that series for the season. And as you mentioned, Coach, going on the road this week, if you win the Colorado game and Iowa State, then uh, the Cowboys and Jayhawks dead even in the Big 8 in terms of uh, road wins, and that's important. We've got to continue just to focus in and play these games one at a time, and uh, it's just a tough league, and everyone is shooting for you, especially when you're at the top like we are. All right, now we turn our attention to the weekly segment, History of Basketball. Tonight, something uh, very dear to your hearts, I'm sure. And, of course, as we mentioned earlier, the home court advantages helped the Cowboys to win 28 straight here at gallagher Iba Arena. Coach, uh, Dick Vitale, your old buddy, <laughs> predicted you would lose against Nebraska, and unfortunately he was right there. He also predicts that you will be the coach of the year in the NCAA. Well, Dick Vitale, now you got to take him with a grain <laughs> of salt. Now, I, he, he was lucky that picking that Nebraska uh, upset, but, uh, you know, that would be nice if that happens, but uh, the thing that I'm most concerned about is that our team does well. Uh, this team has been a real pleasure to coach. And in fact, ever since I got back to Oklahoma State, it's been a real honeymoon uh, last year's ball club. But this team uh, has been very something very special, and I just hope that we can keep healthy and keep focused in on what really is important, getting this ball club through the Big 8 schedule, through the Big 8 tournament, and then to the, the big show, the NCAA tournament. Coach, on Saturday at Iowa State, a team that plays very well at home. They've not been that good on the road, but you play them there, of course. Well, they're better on the road this year, but at, in Hilton Coliseum, they are very, very tough. We beat them 85-67 to 67 here about three weeks ago, but we know it'll be tougher up there Saturday. Johnny Orr does have a good ball club and a team that shoots extremely well, so we're going to have to – they'll really test our defense uh, in that ball game. Coach, briefly, your team's 5-1 and one on the road. Your style is conducive to playing on the road and the NCAA tournament. If you play good, solid defense and you guard people and you can take care of the basketball and you have good shot selection, if your team plays hard, you can play with anyone, regardless of whether you're playing at home and on the road. Uh, it's very, very important because you don't have the crowd in your favor. All right, Coach, congratulations on a great start and best of luck. Thank you. For Eddie Sutton, I'm Dean Blevins. Thanks for watching. See you next week on the Eddie Sutton Show.